every Minecraft world has a border that is 30 million blocks away from spawn. But in this video, I took that border and made it only one block. However, the border will expand by one block every day. Make sure to subscribe to help me reach my goal of 1 trillion subscribers, and let's get right in to day number one. Okay, so you may have noticed something a bit odd about this world. I noticed something was off as well, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I wasn't sure. Oh wait, I was stuck in a one by one border and I had nothing to do except dig down, which was pointless. I could only mine the two blocks of dirt underneath me. There's also a tree right on the other side of the border, which I should be able to chop down pretty soon, but yeah, I can't right now. I can't mine anything outside the border, believe me, I tried. So for the rest of the day, I had nothing else to do except sit there. Well, I guess stand there and wait for day two. On day two, the border expanded by one block. Yay. It may not seem like much now, but just you wait. I will have a giant plot of land by the end of this video. I hope. The first thing I did was broke some tall grass hoping for seeds, and I actually got one. My luck is usually horrible, so that was a nice change. I also realized I'm getting super close to being able to break some leaves of the tree. And just like when I lose a game of Fortnite, I broke everything in sight, even though it was a complete waste of time. I guess I was just tired of sitting there doing nothing, which basically is all school is. And I despise school with a passion. Just kidding kids, go get educated. Anyway, yeah, I wasn't sure why I did that, cause I just placed it all back like the idiot I am. Instead of just standing there, waiting for the next day to arrive, I looked around my world a bit. I couldn't see much, however, I did see some nearby sheep, which will be useful for a bed later on, and I found a cool ice spikes biome. There wasn't anything else that was interesting to note, other than the fact that I was in a giant plains biome, and oh, there were some pink bozos. Then I just stood there again, contemplating my life choices, waiting for the next day. On day three, the border expanded once again, and this time there were some leaves inside of it. I mined them one by one, desperately clinging to the hope that one would drop a sapling. When none did, I got kind of mad cause bad and went into blind rage. I did get another seed out of it though. Pathetic. And then all of a sudden there was a chicken standing right there. I was able to lead it into the border by offering it some free candy, meaning I finally had access to some KFC. I mean, a new friend. Yeah. I instantly put him in a dirt box that he will be spending the rest of his very limited days in. Then I proceeded to break lots of stone for some reason because I was bored and there wasn't really anything else I could do. Pretty quickly I fell into this water cave and it was hard to see there was water with these shaders and at first I thought I was gonna fall to my doom in a giant cave. That would have been funny. There was a lot of gravel showing so I mined it just so that I could have a few blocks. And then I found a flaw in Albert Einstein's invention of gravity because I made like a wall of water. After trying to break some stone while swimming which did not work, I checked back up on my chicken and flexed all of my new gravel. He was super impressed. I looked for some more chickens but couldn't find any more future KFC but the chicken did lay an egg. Bruh, it didn't hatch a chicken. You're a failure dude. Then on accident, yeah accident, I suffocated the chicken in some gravel. Hee <laughs> hee hee. Then guess what? I went back to doing for the rest of the day. It was something super crazy. I bet you'll never be able to guess in 69 billion years. And right as day four was about to arrive, a phantom started beating me up, so I beat it up back. And then I happily watched the dinosaur from Wish.com burn to its death. There were even more leaves that were exposed the next day, so I slowly broke them all, really hoping for a sapling. And yeah, I didn't get one. Bro, if this tree doesn't drop a single sapling, I swear. Because I was yet again bored due to my attention span being the same as a cucumber. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Anyway, I headed back down into the underwater cave and blocked up all the water so that I could dig down. I mined a lot of stone with my fist, only coming across a few pieces of copper. And then I realized, wait, what's the point of doing this? Even if I find maybe coal or even iron, I won't be able to mine it since I don't have a pickaxe. So after being an idiot, I built my way back up to the surface. Not gonna lie, I'm already starting to miss my chicken. I miss him almost as much as your dad who left the house years ago misses you. So basically, I just don't miss the chicken. I started running around for some reason and eventually got so bored, I started making a little parkour course for myself. You know, just with some extra dirt. And yeah, here's me going through it, definitely not missing the dropper section. And after finishing my homemade parkour course first try, I figured I should probably quit wasting hunger because slowly but surely I was running out, and if you somehow don't know by now, you can die of starvation in hardcore mode. Near the end of the day, I went back to waiting for day 5, but this time I built myself the most luxurious mansion you have ever seen because I'm afraid of phantoms. Even though they are quite obviously the Minecraft community's favorite mobs, they can be scary at times, so I spent the rest of the night in paradise, which I know you're jealous of. But before day 5, I went out because I didn't hear any phantoms, and there actually weren't any. I didn't want to risk them spawning out there though, so I just went right back in. But hey, you do get a nice view of my beautiful skin. I dug my way out of my little hidey hole day 5, and saw that I could finally chop down a tree. I had been waiting so many days for this.
this. I left one wood sitting there so that the leaves outside the border won't yet decay and drop saplings I can't reach. And I got a ton of saplings. I was super lucky compared to how I was mining leaves the other day. I ended up with a total of three, which I planted. I also broke my little parkour course, which was fun while it lasted, but now it's just in the way. I also filled in the ground back in with dirt. Oh, <gasps> sheep, yes, please come here. No, don't go that way. Dang, he's completely taunting me. Fine, I don't need you. I went over to craft a wood pickaxe and the sheep had successfully hopped the border, just like the Mexican. Now you're never getting out. Oh, also that was for taunting me earlier. I mined plenty of stone underground, which is where I want my temporary base to be, but that water cave was annoying. The first thing I did after crafting my stone tools was I created a small farm where I planted my seeds. I don't have a water bucket yet to bring up here, so for now I just have to hope they don't dry up. Next, I gave the sheep as good of a mansion as I gave the old chicken. Then a tree grew, which I chopped down of course. I got three more saplings from it. Wow, my luck completely escalated from how it was at the beginning. I placed those saplings down and cooked some charcoal so that I could make torches. After that, I started on a strip mine and instantly found yet another water cave. Yay, my favorite. Instead of going around it like a sane person would do, I went straight in and just kept mining. I did have to make a turn though because of the border. I blocked off the water, continued mining, and ran into a geode. That's pretty cool. My pickaxe broke, so I went back up to the surface where my crafting table was and made a new one. While mining into the geode, I could hear a ton of mobs, which kind of scared me. Thankfully, the inside of the geode was outside the border, which I guess means that no mobs can spawn there. After mining like two more blocks, I stumbled into a mine shaft that had a zombie inside. I took it out and then killed this bat just for fun. I also saw that most of the mine shaft was outside the border. I wanted to keep mining a little longer, but when I found this creeper and a zombie chilling together where I needed to mine, I just headed back up to the surface. And guess what I did for the rest of the night? Day six, I chopped down three of my trees that had grown. Then I drained that one water cave that was annoying me when I was mining by placing blocks on the sides, filling it in, and breaking the blocks I filled it in with. On the way down, I made sure to kill some glow squids because, I don't know, I just felt like it, I guess. And it's fun and relieves stress. It looked like the zombie and the creeper that were chilling in that one spot had despawned, so I was able to continue mining. My pickaxe eventually broke, but this time I had luckily used my one remaining brain cell and brought down a crafting table so that I wouldn't have to go all the way back up to the surface to craft a new one. But for some reason, I still went back up to the surface and saw that the trees had dropped apples. These were nice because I hadn't been able to sprint for a while now. Then I placed some stairs on the way down because it wastes a lot of hunger when I have to jump for every single block in the strip mine. In this world where food is limited, I need to be doing everything I can to prevent me from getting hungry. I may even need to eat the sheep eventually. After mining a bit longer, I stumbled into this weird cave that had cobblestone everywhere. Guys, I think Harrowbrine's in this world. I just ignored it and kept mining and then tickled the skeleton's toes to death. And in the cave where the skeleton was, there were diamonds. Unfortunately, they were outside the border though. Bro, how did I find diamonds before I found iron? I continued mining day 7 and instantly ran into redstone which was blocking my path. Since I didn't have an iron pickaxe to mine it with, I just mined it with my stone one. Once I hit bedrock, I placed more stairs up to the top. I saw that the border had opened up the mine shaft a bit more so I decided to explore it a bit. For some reason I just stood there while I let the creeper explode, but it somehow ended up being successful as it took out a lot of mobs along with it. I took out a few more creepers and then managed to finally find coal. Not iron, but it's a start. Now I could finally craft torches without smelting wood. Then a skeleton hit me and brought me down to two hearts. I decided to spleef it, and I ate my two rotten flesh, which were very delicious, and gained like no health back. For some reason, I took the tiniest peek at the skeleton who was now on the ground and dropped down to one heart. Imagine I died here, that would have been funny. So without hesitation, I headed back up to the surface. There I chopped down trees and mined the leaves in hopes for apples. There's not really another source of food right now. At some point, Chicken 2.0 came inside the border. Nice! I let it live forever in a giant mansion like the other one and finally got an apple. The apple didn't bring me back to full hunger, but it was enough that I regenerated a bit of health. I realized my underground base thing was really weird and ugly, just like your mom. So I decided now, since the border has expanded a decent amount, I should improve it a bit. But still, the first underwater cave I found was really annoying, so I had to completely drain it. And out of pure stupidity, I trampled my only wheat that was super close to being fully grown. That was annoying. Anyway, I did a lot more mining, and eventually I even found a tiny bit of iron. It was only two, but it's better than nothing. While trying to move my staircase back, I heard some phantoms, which scared me really Really bad. One even ended up making its way into my base and I was only at three hearts so you can imagine I was terrified. I killed it though. The next day I made myself a shield with the iron I had. Shields are like the most OP thing in the entire game so that was pretty nice. I also saw that my chicken had laid an egg.
I didn't kill it this time because I was feeling generous. But if that happens one more time, I continued mining out my temporary base and this is how it looks for now. Then I went back to chopping down trees and hoping for an apple to drop. I guess I had killed a skeleton at some point, so I used its bones to make plant steroids and injected the crops with them. But I only got a total of two wheat, meaning I can't even craft one bread. I wanted to go back into the mines, but since I only had three hearts, that would be too risky. Especially since I'm so bad at this game, I did not trust myself to stay alive. But I didn't want this video to be boring, and if I die, I guess I can just restart. So I headed back down into the mine shaft. I did feel a lot more confident now that I had a shield. I was able to mine the rest of the coal that I had started mining yesterday. Then I heard some mobs, so I mined in that direction and ended up finding a cave. I sniffed some big juicy green toes and then ate some rotten flesh, which actually did heal me more than I expected it to. I mined back into the amethyst that had a creeper chill in there, and once I took it out, I saw that there were so many bats in there. I did the only logical thing here and spent a solid two minutes trying to take them all out before giving up. I saw the same skeleton that cyber bullied me yesterday and I heard it just fall out of nowhere. I went in and was easily able to take it out with the help of my shield. I felt like I had enough adventure for one day so I headed back up to the surface. I lit it up a bit, moved the sheep over to the corner of my base, and used more crop steroids to get some more wheat. This farm is starting to get pretty big. Like your mom! Then I just sat afk in a box, definitely not playing mobile games on my phone, and then before the night was over I saw that the chicken had laid another egg. Yeah buddy, you're lucky it won't let me hit you right now for some reason. My problem of having no food was starting to worry me, because again, I can die of starvation in hardcore, so I began making a little mob farm underground. I chose to do it for some reason at the area of each world where a stone begins to turn into deep slate, and I even found some deep slate coal, which is pretty rare. I mined it all up to annoy you guys, but they were in the way anyway, and there was still one left in the floor that I won't need to mine. After mining out a large area and placing trap doors, the little farm was complete other than the fact that I need water to push the mobs into the spot where I take them out. I headed back up to the surface and saw just about every single one of my trees had grown. There were so many trees, it was crazy. If I don't get an apple from this, hey, I actually did, which I went ahead and ate. Then I found another, and then another. I was able to heal back to full health and also had full hunger. It felt so good to finally not have to worry about my health for now. After definitely not looking up the most common place for iron to spawn because I know everything about this game, I started strip mining. And for those who don't know, unlike me, the most common spot for iron is at Y level 16. This proved to be correct as I instantly found an 8 bane. I headed back up after collecting the iron and chucked it into the furnace and I was finally able to craft a bucket. First I grabbed some water from that underwater cave right under my house and put it by the crops so that they won't dry up. Even though for some reason not a single one had. I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time before Harrowbrine shows up. Then I grabbed more water and placed it down at the farm where it needed to go and then ran all the way back up, grabbed more water, ran all the way back down and placed it. After I had gotten in my cardio for the day, I fixed up the area where the mobs will go by adding slabs and trap doors and the farm was complete. I ran up to the surface so that mobs could spawn inside the farm and actually got a chicken from an egg. Finally, holy cow, stupid chicken. I headed back down where I took out all the mobs in the farm. It was working great. I was getting plenty of bones and stuff, so I headed back up to the surface and injected more steroids into the crops until I got 8 wheat. And if you combine that with what I already had, you get 13 wheat. Let's go! I was living the dream that day. I ate bread for dinner. Then I had the genius idea to craft shears with my leftover iron and got 3 wool from the sheep. I was finally able to make a bed and sleep in it. The amount of trees that were growing on my base was getting out of hand. I knew I would continue to need wood throughout the 100 days, so I couldn't just get rid of them entirely. I decided to make a platform above my compound, which is where they'd all go. I crafted like four stacks of oak slabs and got to work. Once I had placed all the slabs down, I somehow forgot to bring all my dirt up, which is pretty important for trees being able to grow. And I didn't really have a way down. Wait, that's water, right? Yeah. I made some ladders to place so that I could have easy access. I placed all the dirt as well as the saplings and looked around a bit now that I had a decent view of my world. There was a frozen ocean thing near the ice spikes biome and not much other than that. The baby chicken still wasn't grown up yet, but the grown one had laid another egg. Of course. I was able to hit it today, let's go. And then it was back in the mines. I murdered a bat and then saw that the border had revealed more parts of the mine shaft, but there wasn't anything special about it. I then headed to the very bottom of my staircase and began stripping mining for diamonds. I don't usually like to strip mine, but there's not many caves that have diamonds inside the border. I found diamonds surprisingly quickly. I made my first iron pickaxe of the world and saw that there were only two of them, but like the quirky and unique queen I am, 
them. I continued mining with my stone pickaxe instead of my iron one because I didn't want it to break. I have a very limited amount of iron in this world. I didn't find any more diamonds today, but a skeleton spawned in a strip mine who was dumb enough to think he stood a chance against the best player to ever exist. Back up at the surface, the chicken had finally grown, so I made sure to breed them. The mom and her kid. Wait, what? The first thing I did day 13 was hatching some chicken eggs. And I didn't get a single chicken. Stupid game. Then I worked on the farm and got a good amount of wheat from it. I expanded it, and it ended up huge. Then I got bored, so I headed into the mines and murdered this bat in the geode. I said hi to a creeper and then mined some gold. This will be useful for making golden apples for curing a zombie villager when the time comes. Then I mined one block in my iron strip mine thing and instantly found an 8 vein. Then I mined even more and tickled some feet. Back at the surface, I bred the chickens again. I think they need a proper chicken coop. I mean, they don't deserve one. I just want to keep them alive for a little longer so that my KFC production would meet standards. And that's exactly what I did the next day. However, instead of making fences, I thought it would be very smart to make a bunch of gates definitely totally on purpose. It's okay though, I have a ton of wood because I'm so rich. I'm basically the Elon Musk of this world. I speed ran a pen for the chickens and began bringing them over, but one pooped out an egg. How rude. After I had them all in, I went up to see how my tree platform was doing. Just about all the trees were grown, so I went ahead and wasted my time chopping them down in the rain and cold. I would also like to point out that, just like phantoms, these big trees aren't annoying in the slightest to chop down. They're one of my favorite features about this game. I also realized that if lightning strikes this platform or it lights on fire somehow, the whole thing is going up in flames because it's all made out of wood. Once I was done chopping down all the trees and replanting, planting them. I made my way down dream style except I didn't cheat and saw that a chicken had escaped. Well I did see an egg outside so I think this chicken came from out there. There is an imposter among us. I could care less though I just dragged it in with the other ones. I noticed the sheep wasn't regrowing its wool which confused me and then I realized it doesn't have any grass to eat. So I made a little staircase of dirt down to the sheep and had to move it around a bit but eventually it looked good enough. It's not a permanent thing, I'll remove it once the grass spreads under the sheep. After that I made an iron chest plate just for a bit of extra protection. At night it wouldn't let me go to bed but I couldn't find any mobs on the staircase or anything so I checked in that water cave. Remember that spot that had a glitch in the matrix on like day 3? Well yeah there was a skeleton there. What are the odds? The grass was spreading pretty fast, which was nice. I headed into the caves, cause why not, and instantly got cyberbullied by mobs. But I did get a chainmail helmet from this nerd. I yoinked a lot of iron and got cyberbullied by a bunch more mobs. They came from a cave that I hadn't lit up yet, but I didn't bring any torches for some odd reason. So I went back up to the surface. I ran out of coal, so I just smelted some wood into charcoal and made torches from that. While I was waiting for them to smelt, I did some farming. I went back to the mines and found this child with some sort of mental illness. He was just jumping around letting me shoot him until he eventually committed self on a live aside. I saw that the one cave that had just been uncovered led to that weird cave that was filled with cobblestone, and it had a lot of iron waiting for me there. I mined it into a cave that had a creeper, and I had a pretty goofy, quirky idea that involved lava. Fun fact, the name of the achievement you get after collecting lava actually comes from your mom. Anyway, I burned the creeper because it was fun. Remember that one cave I found pretty early on in this world that had diamonds? Well, I went back there and they were uncovered. So after getting bullied by mobs and bullying them back, I was able to mine the three diamonds. Then I waxed some feet until my sword broke and bro, how did Filza die to one of these guys? Then for no reason at all, I went back into the geode and returned to the surface. There I bred my chickens more and chucked some eggs right at their faces. I'm a really good pet owner. And it didn't let me fall asleep again, so I checked out one spot and what do you know, there was a creeper there. This time after taking it out, I lit the area up. I ran around my entire plot of land collecting seeds for some reason, even though I didn't need them. And then you'll never guess what I did next. That's right, I headed back down into the caves. I noticed there was a spider clogging the system, so after taking out a few mobs, I headed inside the farm, crafted some slabs, and placed them all down on every other block. This should hopefully prevent spiders from spawning and clogging everything up. I don't need them anyway. Then I found a slime in a cave. I guess I'm in a slime chunk. I felt the urge to punch it to death, so without hesitating I did, along with all its babies. Then I found two endermen right by each other and I did everything in my power to not look at them. I needed to get them in boats but I couldn't get it past the border, so I went down and made some room to place it. I was finally able to and it started suffocating in the block above it, but then a creeper came and had to ruin my shot. It's okay though, I killed it and it dropped an ender pearl. The same thing happened with the other one except it didn't drop a pearl. What a scam. I found a witch and while trying to run away it poisoned me. 
healing. I had gained high ground, so I was about to heal up, but it snuck up behind me. I honestly thought I was dead here, but somehow I was able to kill it on half a heart, because instead of throwing more potions at me, it healed itself up. Rookie mistake. Then I headed back up to the surface, because I was traumatized after seeing my entire life flash before my eyes. Next, I made the rest of my armor, and for some reason, my sword was going through the torch. It looked like I was chopping it in half. On day 17, I decided it was about time I started building a house. I want it to be tall. Really, really tall. I don't know why, but I think it'll look good and funny. For some reason, I was barely below half health, but I still didn't like it. So I went farming and crafted some bread. While going in to breed my chickens, a few escaped, which I can't be allowing. I was gonna kill the baby, but it went back in so I didn't have to. Which is kind of sad because I wanted to kill it. But yeah, I bred them and then chucked their eggs right at their faces without feeling any remorse whatsoever. I wanted a flat area to build on, so I began flattening out the area, but my shovel broke immediately. I got back to work though after crafting a new one. Then that one broke, but after making one more, I had made everything inside the border so far nice and flat. And I was planning on using stone bricks for the build, so I did some smelting. However, I quickly changed my mind after seeing my pretty much endless supply of deep slate. All that strip mining came in clutch, so I made some deep slate bricks and started on the build. When I say this house is gonna be big, I mean it. I was thinking about waiting longer until the border expanded to make it even bigger, but I decided against it because I could not be bothered to wait. By the end, of the day I had made very little progress but I noticed a pink sheep had walked inside my border at some point. What are the chances? I don't have carrots or anything to feed it so you're gonna starve for a while buddy. But that's okay because I starve all my other animals and they're still alive somehow. I made a nice little hole for it and after a bit of struggling I pushed it in. I continued my work on my super insanely tall base on day 18. After a while of placing lots and lots of wood blocks, I ran out of wood. So I headed back up to the tree farm and chopped down all the trees. Then I hit this super insane MLG on some stairs. I grabbed some dirt and then went back up during the night to expand the tree platform even more because the amount of trees it was currently producing wouldn't do the job. And apparently I like to suffer. And I severely underestimated the amount of wood slabs I would need. So I headed back down to craft more, this time actually hitting the MLG. I saw that there was a pretty good amount of mobs on my property. so I took out a few and began lighting the area up. There were also a ton of endermen. After seeing how many mobs there really were, I rushed back down to my little base, grabbed my bed, and ran as fast as possible into the strip mine. I knew it wouldn't let me sleep in my cave because there were mobs nearby, so I had to get away from them. But I was being followed by a creeper, so I blocked it up and went to sleep. Easy. Day 19, I woke up and was easily able to take out the creeper that had bullied me the night before. I went up to investigate and got swarmed by skeletons. While trying to retreat, one came down with me and I kept pushing it. So I blocked myself up again and I was able to tickle its feet. Oh, quit using that stupid joke, it's not even funny. I came up again because I'm an idiot and there was a skeleton awaiting me. I would have taken it on but there was also a creeper. Thankfully it didn't come down the stairs this time and I actually learned my lesson. I blocked up the entrance to the strip mine with dirt. I was easily able to take out the spider and because I was down to just one bread, I yoinked some of my apples through a hole in my wall. I made my way out and got hit from behind by a skeleton that got me down to two hearts. They weren't burning outside because of the giant tree platform protecting them, and they completely kerfuffled me. After I had healed up again, I came back out and was able to kill the two remaining skeletons. Not sure why I was so afraid, I killed each of them in one hit. And to think that whole thing never would have happened if I just slept last night. The first thing I did after that intense morning was lighting up the area. Hopefully, this should prevent that from happening ever again. Then I went back up to the tree platform and after placing a ton of slabs, I completed it. Then I chopped down all the trees that had grown since I was up here last. I hit an insane MLG again because I'm such a pro Fortnite gamer and okay look. I was only out at night to find dark spots to see if mobs could spawn anywhere. I didn't see anything except for this guy. Since there was only one for some reason, I wanted to do something fun with him. Instead of killing him like any other nerd would do, I trapped it in a boat and then I hopped in. I did this because it cannot hit me and if I let him try to shoot me enough with his crossbow, it'll eventually break, turning him into a nice guy who doesn't try and murder me. So I drove it into my base and in Chased him in a nice dirt mansion. Then I hopped back in and sat there for the rest of the night waiting for the crossbow to break. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Yeah, I honestly have no clue how long this is gonna take. After just about all day of waiting, the nerd finally broke his crossbow. Only took you 17 years. I cautiously made my way out of the boat, ready to hop right back in, because I've never done this before and I wasn't sure if he could like punch me or something. I broke the boat and he seemed pretty friendly. Why are his hands like that? Maybe he just misses the crossbow so much. He had his hands like how he would when he did hold a 
the crossbow. What an idiot. Then I made it a really nice house and shoved him in there. And I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but it wouldn't let me sleep because the pillager was nearby. Oh wait, maybe it was this guy. Or not, that's gonna be a problem. I had to sleep in my house that is a work in progress tonight. I woke up day 21 and saw a spider climbing the border. I didn't even know they could do that. I saw that my wheat was pretty much fully grown and I really wanted to harvest it all at once instead of picking the fully grown ones one by one. So I injected them once again with crop steroids. And man, it was so satisfying to break it all. What made it less satisfying though was that my inventory was full. Then I bred my chickens, which were all grown up. And you have no idea how good it felt to be able to craft 20 bread that will probably last for like a day because i'm so fat i could eat that all in one sitting and then have a not so fun time on the toilet tomorrow then i decided to get back to building my house while making the roof i ran right into the tree platform great it's fine the ceiling won't go any higher than this for now. By the end of the day, the house was looking awesome, but it's nowhere near complete. And yeah, I confirmed the theory that this idiot was not letting me sleep at night. I was mining grass for so long on day 22. I really wish I had an efficiency 5 netherite helmet so I could insta mine it. Wait, what? But I continued working on the giant base. I don't know why, but I didn't do the time lapse thing today. But then I noticed another pig had illegally crossed the border. How do they keep getting past without getting arrested? Again, though, I don't have carrots to breed it with the other guys, so they're kind of useless to me at the moment. After breeding my chickens and stuff, a bunch escaped. But I was in a good mood, so instead of turning them into KFC, I led them back into their pen. And then I continued work on the giant base for the rest of the day. I mostly just worked on roofing, which is going to take the longest because of how massive it's going to end up. By nighttime, I was higher than the tree island. That's insane. And this is how my beautiful monstrosity looked by the end of the day. I was out of wood, so basically all of day 24, I was chopping down trees up at the tree platform. Once I had replanted the saplings, I continued working on my giant house house, and I even continued doing it through the night. However, when it started to rain, I just dipped and bred my chickens. But as I was about to go back to bed, I realized my pillager I forced to be nice was missing. No! I very sadly went to bed that night. I continued work on my base day 25. I also want to point out that I did not have any idea what I was doing. I was just making this all up as I went, like usual. After building most of the day, I ran out of deep slate stuff, so I decided to kill two phantoms with one stone by mining deep slate at diamond level. But I I forgot about how much the border expanded since I was last down there, so I got a little distracted. After taking out some mobs and grabbing some iron, there were a ton of mobs that were down there. So I got scared and just went to the very bottom of the mine where I could start strip mining. After my pickaxe broke, I was like, wait, why am I using a stone pickaxe? I have an iron one. So I used that for the rest of the day, but unfortunately never came across any more diamonds due to my skill issue. I continued strip mining the next day, collecting deep slate, but then my iron pickaxe broke. This made me really sad so I very sadly went back up to the surface. On the way back, I stopped at the mob farm, and you could barely see it, but there was a zombie with a pumpkin on its head. At the time I was playing, it was Halloween. Yeah, October 31st, 2023. I make these videos so slowly, holy cow. But after mining this andesite or whatever with my fist, cause I was still sad about my pickaxe breaking, giving up and making a new pickaxe, I had carved out a small room to put it in. I let the zombie loose and was quite easily able to get it into a boat. I wanted to keep this zombie because you can only get one with a pumpkin one day per year. Also this time I made sure to trap it into a boat because I learned my lesson the hard way with the pillager. Dude, I'm honestly not even that sad about it despawning. I'm sad about wasting like an entire day waiting for its crossbow to break. That's a lot of chickens. And to think, this isn't even half the amount of chickens I want there to be in my chicken empire. And this guy wanted to say hi, but I said no. -uh. Then I explored my little area I had inside the border and came across a cave. I explored it, but the good part of it was outside the border. I lit up my area to disable mob spawning and terrorizing me, and came across yet another cave. I saw another sheep that was close to the border, so I tried to lure it in, but I panicked and used seeds, which I I guess sheep hate so it went the other way. I noticed yet another animal I now had access to, squids. But just like me, they're useless. I saw I was pretty low on wood which I would need for my house so guess what I did. Also here's me sneezing in real life. Yeah. My axe eventually broke, but I didn't have any stone to make a new one. So on the way back down, I hit a nice clutch and crafted a new one. Once I finished mining all the trees, I had a pretty solid amount of wood. Instead of immediately going to work on the house, I went and terraformed the land a bit. Also, yeah, I'm still working from this place. Not for long, though. I saw that all of my crops were fully grown except for this freaking idiot here, which I didn't really care about, so I harvested it all. Chickens! Hey, you know the rules. There is no escape. 
Day 28, I crafted a ton of bread and ended with one wheat left over. With that singular piece of wheat, I went over to the border hoping to bring in the sheep. Hey, come on bro, there's no cops around. I finally convinced the sheep to illegally cross the border and because there were now two, I could breed them and make infinite sheep. I crafted lots of fences and began placing them all down. I lured the sheep into their new palace and injected more crops with steroids because I only had one wheat. Then I continued work on my base. The funny thing is, if I fall from up here, I'm pretty much dead unless I can clutch with a water bucket, but as you've seen, I suck at it. First thing I saw the next day while continuing the house was a skeleton with a pumpkin head. It was still Halloween when I was playing this, by the way. Honestly, though, I cannot be bothered to trap a skeleton in a boat. They are just way too annoying. Also, if it hits me like three times, I'm dead. I continued on the roof, which of course took so long because of how big it is. Why did I make it this big, dude? But I finished, you know, most of it. There's a lot of changes I still need to make, like the sidewalls not being filled in, or whatever you want to call them. Oh, yeah and I killed the skeleton because it tried to shoot me while I was building the roof. By the end of the day, I got one of the sidewalls filled in. It wasn't Halloween anymore, so I headed down into the mines to see if my pumpkin idiot was still there. Luckily, he was. Not sure what I was expecting. Drop some names for him in the comments, and I'll maybe read them. But for now, the zombie's just gonna go back into his mansion. I wanted to go back into the caves because the borders have expanded a ton since I've last been here, but I had absolutely no sticks or coal for torches. I needed to light up the caves, so I went and chopped down lots of trees from the tree farm. I didn't chop them all down, but once I had a pretty good amount, I headed back down into my little base and smelted lots of wood into charcoal. While I waited for that, I bred my sheep and my chickens, which is getting very crowded. I also let a ton out on accident, but it's okay, I just killed them all, including the children. I was able to make like two stacks of torches, so on day 31, I went down into the caves and began to light everything up that was dark. I was getting a ton of iron so much that when my stone pickaxe broke, I made a new iron one and replaced my stone tools with iron ones. Finally, I'm not a peasant anymore. Well, actually, someone who's not a peasant would have diamond tools. And then when I have diamond tools, I'm gonna think you have to have netherite to not be a peasant. Anyway, I ran into a spider spawner, which I lit up and made sure not to break because I may want to build an XP farm later on. Who knows? Then I got poisoned. I found another spawner and got poisoned again. Nice. After a while, I ran into a large deep slate cave that had a lot less mobs than I was expecting. Now that the border had expanded a pretty good amount, the mobs have plenty of spaces to spawn unlike the beginning when the border was tiny and there was only like one place for them all to spawn. Honestly, the best way to deal with creepers is to just let them explode and use your shield to absorb the damage. Still in the caves the next day, you'd think there'd be a lot less caves in such a small border, but I spent the entire day lighting them up. I just kept finding more and more that I hadn't explored before and also I found lots of mobs. And I continued to use my new creeper strategy as I bulldozed my way through the mobs. Somehow throughout the entire day, I never died and never even got close to death. I'm I'm just that good at the game. Oh, also, I've probably used like, what, five stacks of torches by now? I did run into some diamonds, which was nice. And only three. Yay. Then I had the genius idea to push this enderman here into some lava and it teleported outside the border, which I didn't know was possible. We had a staring contest and of course I ended up winning cause I'm better. But overall it was a successful mining trip. While putting away stuff I'd collected during my mining journey, I could hear the most annoying sounds on the face of the planet. I made a sword and I think you get the idea of what I'm about to do. Maybe I went a little bit overboard killing them all, but do you guys hear that? It's silence! And no, not the armor trim. But the silence won't be lasting long as I threw in the stacks upon stacks of eggs I'd collected. You know, I don't think food is ever gonna be a problem anymore in this world. But you know what is a problem? Coal. I just don't have any. I made a new furnace dedicated to making charcoal, but I hardly had any wood. So I went up to my tree platform and chopped down all the trees. After hitting an insane MLG, my coal problem seemed to be solved for now. My two and a half stacks of iron had finished smelting on the morning of day 34. I am so rich. Then it was back to completing my ginormous mansion, and at one point I fell and hit an MLG. That was definitely intended and not an accident in the slightest, and I was definitely not flabbergasted after doing so. But anyway, after filling in the wall, I was just about done with the exterior. Just kidding, it looks so flat and boring right now. I'm definitely gonna make sure to change it up a bit, but that's a future task. Now all I have left to do is the interior, which I'm absolutely absolutely dreading because I suck at interiors. And while lighting my area up, I noticed there was some sugarcane inside my border, so I began a small sugarcane farm. Also while exploring, I spotted a cave that actually goes really deep. 
Somehow, I was already out of wood, so I had a lot of fun holding left click for like 6 years. I started off day 35, also known as Tihi Uwu Day, by crafting a flint and steel, which is already a sign that I'm gonna be doing some naughty stuff. I went up to my tree platform and tore it down in the most environmentally friendly manner possible. I was just spamming fire on like every single block until it ended up breaking. Oh shoot, it's on my house, that's not good. I instantly rushed over there and easily put the fire out. I thought it would be a lot more difficult than that, but it hadn't spread much. Bro, imagine my entire house I spent the last like 300 days on just burst into flames. Eventually, the fire was put out and my platform was in great shape. Then I had a ton of fun removing each dirt block individually. A lot of fun. But that's not all I had planned for Tihi Uwu Day. I harvested some wheat in hopes that I could lure a cow into the border. After punching a duck to death for no apparent reason, I wanted to try something out. And that something was chucking a big blue ball outside the big blue wall. Not gonna lie, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't instantly die, so that's a good sign. I found out though that walking too far outside the border causes you to take damage. Good to know. I continued looking around for a cow to bring back, but while doing so, I accidentally walked back in. I guess an enchanting setup is gonna have to wait. I had some KFC for breakfast and then finished cleaning up my tree layer because apparently I didn't finish yesterday. And honestly, who needs a tree platform when you can have a tree side? Ooh, that sounded way better in my head. I made a pretty large area dedicated to trees and then began work on the inside of my house starting by removing the grass. Believe it or not, houses actually need a Floor. Yay, look at that, it's raining. How happy. I woke up on day 37, shocker, and again had a nice healthy $20 fill up from KFC for breakfast. I stopped by my house and realized that my one brain cell completely forgot to light up the inside. Stupid brain cell. I had a lot of fun murdering these idiots and even pulled out an Uno reverse card on these skeletons. You wanna fight me? Nah, you're gonna fight each other. Once the mobs were taken care of, I placed in my flooring. I didn't have enough wood to finish my new flooring, so for like the 17th day in a row, I went back to chopping down trees. And dude, I think my last brain cell completely died because I still hadn't lit up the inside. Luckily, when I came back, there was only one spider, which thought it stood a chance against me. Once I finished the floor, however, I actually remembered to light up my house. My brain cell was resurrected. I began day 38 by grabbing an egg and chucking it onto myself, which I recommend adding to your morning routine. I gathered some sand and smelted them into glass. Look at all my chicken, I am rich, bro. I then added a pretty large window in the front of my house. After that, I made some scissors and gathered a ton of leaves which I placed down all around my house. Then I started trying to do something but it never ended up looking good so I removed it. I finally figured out what I was going for so I added it on both sides. The way I decorated the entrance without even adding a door. I added a few more windows and began to look around and maybe find a cow. Unfortunately I had no luck but the small orange pool of water was getting pretty close. After that I went inside and began to separate the top and the bottom of the house to create another story. But I quickly ran out of wood so I had to go and chopped down all the trees which took the rest of the day. After spending like six years of my life placing oak slabs, I finally created another story. But because I was out of deep slate, which is always nice to have, I headed down into my strip mine to collect some more. And I kid you not, after mining like three blocks, diamonds were revealed. I ended up getting four from that vein, not too shabby. After thinking my luck was over, I found a few more. Then I heard some lava, so I mined in the direction I heard it in, and would you look at that, even more diamonds. Because my pickaxe broke, I made a diamond one, but then I realized I didn't want it to break anytime soon, so I made another iron one and used that to mine. A little bit of digging later, I found myself in a cave that had lava, and after looking around there was even more, so after hearing a scaly noise, I turned it all into obsidian and held down left click for like 49 years straight bro, it took forever. I collected 14 pieces, enough for a nether portal and an enchantment table if I ever get to that point. And dude, I swear I'm not cheating, but right as I went back to mining, I found more diamonds. How? And then shortly after, I found more. Ooh, Lapis, don't mind if I do, I'll just mine that up real quick. And Okay, maybe I am hacking. Maybe I just get up in the middle of the night and sleep hack or something. I was done, dude. That felt way too good to be true, so I went back up and went to bed. Day 41. One, I realized my house was very empty, and because I absolutely suck at interiors, I decided that it would be best if I built like a grand staircase sort of thing to the second floor. And that's what I did all day. I again forgot to record a time lapse using replay mod, but whatever. I kept tearing things down and redoing it because I didn't like the look of it, and once I had it all figured out on one side, I copied it on the other. However, that was easier said than done as I wanted them exactly symmetrical, meaning I had to go back and forth so many times to make sure I was doing it right. It ended up 
up looking great by the end of the day, but it's hard to get a good angle. Why am I breaking that? I spent the rest of the night patching up random holes. After committing mass genocide upon chickens, I was in a pretty quirky mood, so I harvested my sugarcane and added to the farm. Then I decided to see if there was a border in the nether or not, so I made a portal, lit it up, and hopped in. At first glance, I could see, yeah, there was a dang border keeping me from exploring the world, and I was in a stupid crimson forest. Hey, at least it's not a stupid basalt biome. I killed a pig that was stuck in a hole. Unlucky. And then I realized that there's no fortress inside the border. I was expecting that to happen, but I was hoping I might get lucky. So it's either gonna be a while until I get blaze rods, or I won't at all. You know, not finding a fortress sucks, but even if I did get blaze rods, the chances that a stronghold would be inside my border is like a negative 1% chance. I was again out of wood, so guess what I spent the day doing? Yay! I had something in mind for what I wanted to build next, but I needed a solid amount of wood to do it. After replanting all the trees, I went over to my wheat farm, which was way too close to my house. So I harvested everything and removed the water. I began jumping on the tilled dirt so that it would go back to normal, but it was too hard, so I gave up. I wanted to build a separate place for my animals since they are being super loud and annoying that's a bit further away. So I began building a barn for them, and at the same time terraformed a bit. Just like most things I build, I had a bit of an idea of what I was trying to build, but I really didn't know what I was doing. But I want to point out that I made the terrain look super natural, just look at this. By the end of the day, I had it looking super awful. I continued work on the barn the next day, but after working on the roof for a while, I ran out of deep slate. So I headed down into the mines to mine for more. And surely I've used up all my diamond luck by now, there's no way I find- WHAT?! I don't know what it is, but I've just been super lucky with diamonds inside these borders. But those were the only four I found on that mining trip because my luck absolutely sucks. Work on the barn continued day 46 as I added to the roof. I also mixed in some slightly different materials to make it not just completely one block. Once the roof was finished, it didn't look half bad, but there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. By the end of the day, I added whatever you want to call that to the barn, and it was looking pretty good. I added a nice pathway inside the barn by shoveling some dirt and adding some coarse dirt along with a bit of gravel. Then I realized the back wasn't even done yet, so I did that in the same way as I did the front. I was gonna show the stupidly loud animals to their new prisons, but I got distracted when I saw some bees flying around, so I decided to go investigate that and I ended up finding two beehives right next to each other. Not gonna lie, I've never really messed with bees before in this block game, but I kinda know how to handle them. But I was still being cautious placing campfires underneath the hives and cheering them. I brought over some flowers to the bees and breeded them. Then I looked around for some cows and got distracted by trying to push a pig over to my barn. But I quickly gave up and decided that I needed to get either carrots or potatoes, and I think the only way to obtain those is from zombies. So I made my way into the caves and quickly found a pretty open cave. I had some pretty close calls and got one singular stupid diamond that was a scam. Oh, and I also put a chicken in a boat. Then I just ran through a ton of mobs for some reason. Probably not my best move. I killed a ton of zombies, but never got any potatoes or carrots. Because life is a scam. I was able to find a few diamonds the next day, and then after a while of murdering stupid green goblins, I finally obtained a potato. And then like two seconds later, I got another one. I guess the ones in gold armor are lucky. It took me a while because I was lost, but once I returned to the surface, I dumped like 20 pounds of white stuff onto the potatoes. I ended up with a stack. Day 50, I moved all the animals into their brand new prisons, starting with the pigs, which for some reason was already buried in one of the pens. Then I moved on to the chickens, which was kind of fun to see them all come at me, but at one point they would just not obey me. I'm holding seeds, why aren't you following me, idiots? And last but least, I moved the sheep in. Also, I got some honey from my bee nests, I decided that with all my diamonds, I should probably make some diamond armor. So I only made a few pieces for some reason, I don't know why not the full set. But then I realized I have a house, how am I still living in a cave like this? But before transferring all my stuff from the cave into the house, I want a villager. And the only way to get that is with a zombie villager and a witch, since there are no villages near me for a villager. And I need the witch to splash a weakness potion on the zombie villager to cure it because I can't craft a brewing stand without blaze rods. So after turning my render distance down, 
down so more mobs would spawn around me, I headed into the caves. And after definitely not coming close to death at all, I was able to find a witch, so I made sure to put it in a boat, after it poisoned me of course. Then at the end of the day, I actually found a zombie villager, which after a bit of struggle, I managed to put into a boat as well. I was able to get the zombie and the witch pretty close together, so that's nice. I made my way back up to the surface because I somehow forgot a golden apple. After making one, I spotted a cow. No way. Now I can actually get leather and- Are you kidding me? There's just one. Now I can't abuse them and make an infinite leather farm. Dang it. Well, I guess it's gonna be a while till I get my stupid enchanting setup, but I brought the cow back anyways. I made my way back to the zombie, freed it, and brought it to its death. Wait, I'm trying to cure it. How's that its death? I got it into the boat, and because you have to be near the witch for it to throw weakness, I came up close to it. There's a 25% chance for it to throw weakness and it threw poison. Five freaking times. But on the plus side, I found yet another zombie villager next to where the witch was. But somehow the day was over before I could cure the stupid villager idiot. So basically, I had to try all day long to get the stupid witch to throw me a weakness potion. And for some reason, it just didn't. It kept giving me poison over and over and over and over again. I'm not even joking, it threw poison 11 times. At that point, I had almost a 300% chance of getting weakness. Bro, I had to go back to the surface because I was out of food before I could cure the stupid stupid villager. I ate almost an entire stack of cooked chicken in just two days, bro. I'm gonna be so fat after this. I yoinked some chicken and then went back to my villager. It was apparent that the witch wasn't gonna throw weakness, so after a bit of research, I found out that it only threw weakness while I was poisoned. But before I could try, I was swarmed by zombies. They just kept on coming. At one point, I ate a gapple, hoping that I could regenerate faster than I could take damage, but I fell. Bowl. But after not too long, it finally threw weakness, so I cured the zombie villager. Then I killed the witch and that stupid skeleton. Or not. Killing the witch was probably not my best move, considering we have another zombie villager that a witch is also gonna need to cure, but whatever, that's a problem for another day. But I boxed in the villager and mined back up to the surface so that I could transport the villager up there easily. I'm not gonna do that yet though, cause I don't really have a spot for it. I mostly spent the next day chopping down trees. Then I began collecting some yellow flowers to make yellow dye for the sheep. I wanted to get started on the camel as soon as possible because I needed to collect a grand total of 4,000 wool. That may not seem like that much, but that's almost 63 stacks of wool. That's gonna take so long. Also, I found some llamas, but they weren't on a lead, so that means the trader's in the nether. I disposed of the llamas and got my first leather of the world and headed in the portal. The trader had garbage. I genetically modified my slaves and proceeded to do the same to their offspring. Then I made a giant wheat farm because because I'm planning on breeding a ton of sheep, so I'm gonna need a ton of wheat. After that, I wasted stacks of wood on chests and barrels. I placed them all down in my house and then moved all my belongings from my stupid little cave thing. It served me well, but I've definitely grown out of it. You know, with all that storage space, you'd think I'd organize really well. Nope. Because my villager was so annoying to cure, and it's just an annoying thing in general, I decided to build a prison for it. Which took a surprising amount of time. My iron stonks were at an all time low after building it, but personally, I think it was worth it. I made the roof out of dirt, cause that's all the idiot that will be living in here deserves. And I put in a ladder system so that only I can get in and out. There's no escape for him. I bred the sheep, which is something I'm going to do a lot. However, this is just a small fraction of how many sheep there are gonna be, and they are already crowded. I'll get to that later though, cause for now, I was going down to bring the villager up. And other than it going on my guardrail things a bit somehow, everything went surprisingly smoothly, except for that. Alright villager, I'm gonna hold you captive here with no food or water for the rest of eternity. And if you die, I'll kill you! I was just walking around inside my border when I saw more cows right outside, so I riled up four of them and brought them back over to my glue factory. Wait, that's for horses. Now I can actually, maybe, possibly, hopefully, successfully, catastrophically, among usly, make a full enchanting setup. I've been waiting so long for this, you have no idea. Oh, and then I made a huge area for all my sheep and lured them in, which was fun. Yeah, soon this entire thing is gonna be filled to the brim with genetically modified organisms. I was running low on food, so I murdered chickens until my axe broke. Look, I was putting them out of their misery, okay? I harvested wheat and then sheared sheep until my shears broke. At this point, I could just keep shearing sheep for 
forever and ever without stopping because there are so many of them that at least one regrows its wool every few seconds. I also realized I needed a ton more cows for a full enchantment setup so I moved them over to where the sheep had been. Then I went mining for iron. I continued my super fun routine that's definitely not getting old on day 61 but when I tried to go to bed my game crashed. When I opened it back up it put me back to the middle of the day and I guess all my achievements had been reset meaning basically all of my advancements that I had gotten in this world so far were completely gone and if I wanted to get them back I would just have to redo them but I basically just gathered wool the rest of the day. Achievements aren't very important for me at the moment so it wasn't that big of a deal but it was still kind of annoying. Apparently I committed mass murder among many chickens for nothing the other day because the chicken I had put into the smoker was gone due to the crash so I just had to kill more. Then I pulled an innocent prank on the bees and chopped down all the trees. This time it wasn't because I needed the wood but because the trees were in the way of where I wanted to put the giant yellow horse with the hump on its back. But I replaced the trees further away in case I would need the wood some other time and was able to go to sleep without the game crashing, no way. The next day I flattened and then marked out the area where the camel would be. Then I went back to shearing sheep. On day 64, I began to build the camel. Fun fact, I was planning on building a sniffer instead of a camel, but I would need a ton of green wool for that, which you need green dye for, which you need cacti for. And there's no desert inside my border, so the only way to get cactus would be through a wandering trader, but my luck with those are always terrible. But honestly, the sniffer is kind of overrated anyways. Sure, it may be a little more iconic, but in reality, all it does is dig up seeds. And it's ugly, and was named after Joe Biden. The camel, on the other hand, is like a better version of a horse. It can take you places much faster than horses, I think. But after placing all my like 1,500 wool or something, I had made some pretty good progress. I borrowed some ink sacks and then dyed some sheep black. I'm gonna need a bit of black and gray dye for the camel, so might as well get started on that sooner rather than later. Then it was back to grinding. The next day, I realized I needed brown wool, so I looked for a brown sheep and of course there wasn't one. You only come across them when you don't need them. Then I figured I had enough cows, so after fattening them up, I murdered all the adults. But I ended up only only being able to craft 10 bookshelves and I need 15. Oh, and then I found a sheep that was stuck in a fence. Bro, how does that even happen? I grabbed all my wool the next day and continued work on the camel. As you can see on this one, it has a lot of, you know, different shades of yellow. However, there's not a lot of different yellow blocks I can get while confined in this border. The other main block I would use if I could would be bamboo planks. I could make yellow concrete or yellow concrete powder, but that would be a pain so I can't be bothered. By the end of the day, it was looking just like a camel. After seeing another stupid sheep that was stuck, I continued the grind and did chores all day. How fun! Oh, and I also found out that when my game crashed the other day, it not only reset my advancements, but also my stats as well. Yeah, there's no way I've only played in this world for an hour and a half. I wanted to take a break from doing anything regarding the camel, so I committed mass murder among the cows on day funny number without even bothering to fatten them up first. I only needed 15 leather, but I ended up getting 16, so because they looked hungry, I gave the extra one back to the cows for them to eat because I'm just that generous. I made the last 5 bookshelves I need and got diamonds for the first time apparently, as well as obsidian. Then I plopped down my enchantment setup, which is both very cramped and not symmetrical, but I don't care. All I care about is that it's functional so with my 52 levels, I enchanted my pants, shirt, and pickaxe. Then I made a diamond helmet and some shoes, as well as an axe, and enchanted them all. I got pretty lucky with the enchants on those three, but I had to re-enchant my pants and pickaxe because they were pretty bad. But now I was in full diamond armor and looking like a baddie. Then I went to go brag to my prisoner, who I have held captive, that you most likely forgot about. Because I haven't done a single thing with him for some reason. Why do I even have this guy? Then I discovered my house was not absolutely perfectly symmetrical so of course I had to fix that. Day 70, I began putting in the camel's toenails, and because I didn't have any brown wool, I just used wood. But I only had enough wool to do two legs. It then began raining, and I realized that if my camel statue got struck by lightning, it would completely burn to the ground. Same thing with my wooden house. So I made a lightning rod and placed it kind of close to them, but far enough away that if lightning struck it, nothing around would catch on fire, hopefully. I spent the entirety of the next day holding down right click and placing wool. When I have carpal tunnel in a few years, here's why. But I made a lot of progress on the giant yellow blob.
Since I was basically done with the camel, I decided to just completely murder each and every yellow sheep I had. To be honest, it was very fun, and it actually took a good 5 minutes or so to kill all of them. At the end, there was just one left, as well as some chickens for some reason. Then I spent the rest of the day breeding and shearing grey and black sheep. Even though I never used the one I have, I wanted to get another villager. So I looked around in caves and even got some diamonds until I got to where I cured my first villager. I remembered I already had an extra zombie villager waiting for me, so now all I had to do was find a witch. After a while of searching, I finally found one, so I led it back to the zombie villager. Then I punched the witch into Mr. Green Villager's boat and began the curing process. But this time, since I actually knew what I was doing, and thanks to my amazing armor, I got weakness pretty much right away. After feeding this green idiot a golden apple, I instantly killed the witch, because well, why would I keep it? And by the end of the day, it was cured. Since the villager was so close to my other one, I used the same staircase to get up as I had used for the other one. It was very annoying because, for some reason, it just refused to take the jaw block, but I eventually got it up. Then it fell down. Not quite all the way down, but it was still annoying. However, I still managed to get it to its prison, and it said hi to its cellmate who it will be spending the rest of eternity with. Then I spent all night chopping down trees. I borrowed some leather and flint to make my prisoners useful and force them into labor. I made some profits and began the quest for mending, which I got surprisingly quickly. Then, after making myself a diamond shovel and sword, I got pretty good enchantments on them. Then, with my looting sword, I borrowed even more leather, even though I didn't need it. Alright, it was time to finish the camel, so after searching on Feet Finder, I located its toes and began adding toenails, or whatever those are. What are those? Toenails? Socks? Once I was done with whatever that was, I added a face to the camel using wood and wool. After adding its eyes, I gave it some ears, and with that, the camel was complete. Looks a little weird, I know, but I didn't have a lot to work with, okay? I wanted to build a bubble elevator to get up to the inside of the camel easily through its feet, but you need soul sand to do so. I headed to the nether, and because I was pretty sure that soul sand couldn't spawn in crimson forests, I traded with piglins instead, and I also got some magma blocks. On my way back, I accidentally clutched over lava. I, I think that counts as a clutch. Then in the overworld, I wanted to test if I could grow kelp, but apparently you can only grow that seagrass stuff that has no use. I got to work day 79 on the bubble elevator. It was annoying and took all day to complete because I had to continuously bring water up, but here are the results. Yeah, pretty useless. Instead of doing anything involving the camel the next day, I was in the nether looking for a fortress, and after a while I located a bastion, so I gathered up all my non-existent courage and made my way in. But of course the two chests had to be like 5 blocks outside the border, so I left, looked around a bit longer for a darn fortress, and then went back home. I applied mending to my pickaxe and then went straight back into the nether and began mining ancient debris. Because the bastion I'd found was a treasure one, we were guaranteed to find find a stupid netherite upgrade thing in the chest. So of course I wanted full netherite everything, meaning I had to spend the next couple of days mining. Over the past few days, I had collected a measly 26 ancient debris, which is about half of a full netherite beacon. That was good enough for me, so I went back home and put them in the oven. Then I went back to the nether because by now the chests in the bastion should have been revealed. But on the way there, I definitely didn't almost die. It was all planned okay. Also, you can see that I did clutch and then just jumped right off. Which is kinda weird, but whatever. I panicked okay. Once I arrived at the bastion, it was actually pretty easy to loot. I got two templates as well as more netherite right from the main chests, but I wasn't done yet. I went behind the bastion because you can see some gold blocks sticking out and I yoinked those. And after murdering more ripoff pigs, I obtained yet another template and then after speed bridging over lava and hitting a decent clutch, I went back home. On day 85, I turned my chest plate and pickaxe into netherite. However, I could only duplicate a netherite template once because I was very low on diamonds. I wanted to go mining for some more, however, it would probably take the rest of the 100 days if I didn't have fortune on my pickaxe. And I was low on levels, so the chances of getting fortune by enchanting the pickaxe were very slim. So instead, I placed down some more beds and forced these two men to make babies because Minecraft makes sense. My plan was to force the future child, I mean slave, into labor so that it would sell me fortune. Then I figured that I wanted 
wanted to make a new mine entrance because I don't like the current staircase I have, so I got to work. I wanted to give the camel a bit of a purpose, you know, so my plan for this was to do the same bubble elevator sort of thing in its back legs that I did in its front legs, but I want these ones going all the way down to bedrock, and to do that I had to mine straight down and hit some MLGs, nice. I was working on the bubble elevator all the next day, bro if I just had kelp this whole thing would have taken like one minute instead of 20. The next day I was able to finish it up, but instead of making the tunnel with a magma block like I did on the front leg, I instead just put one water source at the bottom. This allowed me to cannonball down very quickly. It takes a lot less time to set up and it gets me down faster so it's really just a win-win. Day 88 I went and visited my prisoners because I'm such a nice person. Just kidding I was only doing it for my own selfish reasons. Using the child that had now grown into an adult I was able to get a fortune 3 book. I applied it to my netherite pickaxe and now I was finally ready to begin strip mining for diamonds. I headed down and oh by the way I had found two veins of diamonds while working on the camel mine entrance thingy which I was saving until I had fortune. So that was a nice head start. Two thousand years later. After some unpaid labor in the mines over the course of several days, I had gathered a total of that much diamonds. I cannot be bothered to do the math right now. I thought that was enough, so I headed back up to the surface. I was gonna duplicate the templates, but I realized you need netherrack, and apparently I don't have any, so I went and got some. Once I was home, I finally duplicated the templates and made myself full netherite armor and tools. It's too easy. Look at me, I look so cool and cringe and sus and bald and stupid and trash and I had a ton of leftover diamonds that I didn't know what to do with. Day 91, the sun was shining, the grass was green, it was just a beautiful day. Almost as beautiful as you see. I tore down the giant fence that had once surrounded like basically millions of yellow sheep and then went around exploring. Part of the ice biome I had previously spotted had been exposed, so I explored it but it was kind of a letdown because there was nothing there. Then I slapped a sheep to death because why? Why not? Because I didn't want my giant wool camel to be struck by lightning and burned to the ground, I went to bed early. Even though I already have a lightning rod, I don't want to risk anything. The next day I set a few stacks of cobblestone on fire and had to cover up my old hidey hole, which had a few random items I had chucked in there for some reason. Then I began an outline for what would be a pretty large fountain. I wanted it slightly underground, along with a circular staircase leading to it. So after mining out the area, I started on the staircase. The next day I realized it would look weird if I left it as it is now, so I had to remove everything I had done so far back a block. I'd also like to mention that I may or may not have run out of storage on my computer, which is why I can't record using the replay mod anymore. Oops. Also at one point I needed more stone brick slabs, but I accidentally made just stone slabs. I'm such an idiot. Out of pure anger and skill issue, I tossed them into the lava pool. However, the staircase was done by the end of day 93. Oh, and I also tore down the nether portal because it was in the way. Day 94, I began work on the fountain. Because I couldn't show a time lapse, here's a montage instead. It actually looked sick by the end of the day, I was pretty happy with it. The next day, I didn't like how my land was all grass and natural. I wanted some more man-made stuff, so I began collecting materials for a pathway. And that's what I did all day. I mostly collected andesite, stone, and gravel. Then I was just staring at furnaces all night, definitely not AFK, letting cobblestone smoke. I began by carving out a path from the fountain to my house, which has two entrances. So I made it split up into two parts, each leading to one entrance. Then I began filling it in with the different types of stone I had previously collected. I continued working on the roads the next day, and was able to finish the road from the fountain to my entrances. Then I made one that went from the fountain to the animal barn thing. Doesn't really look like a barn does it. Then at night I wanted to bring the road to the legs of the camel which is where I have my mine entrance but it wasn't perfectly even so I had to move this part back a layer. After I'd finished making the pathways to the camel legs I had made a road to just about every major landmark in my world so that's cool I guess. I noticed a slight imperfection in my world so I instantly had to correct it. Basically I made the turn gradual instead of that suspicious monstrosity. Then I spent the day creating lampposts along the roads. I had to 
to speed run them because you know I was kind of on day 99. I may have ended up going a little overboard and I kind of placed a ton more than there needed to be but I just gotta say at night it lit up the area really well. On day 100 I decided to do a live commentary thing I don't really know what I was doing so here it is. All right yo what is up guys um so Bruh. I'm gonna do like a a tour of my world real quick and if you don't want a tour I don't care, I'm still giving you a tour, I don't care what you say. First on the list is, uh, this water fountain thing, and it- it looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Okay, it's pretty big, it's pretty grand, I like it, and you get to this pathway right here, which, uh, leads to my house, with beautiful doors, I know. I was too lazy to put them in. Uh, we'll go up there in a minute. First off, my crafting area, got the crafting tables, or crafting table, the furnaces, uh, smoker which has steak in it which i'll take and the the what's this called smithing table thing i don't know over here is my not at all crowded enchantment setup and it's definitely symmetrical look i don't care it's functional all right that's all i really need up here is my storage system yeah there is a lot of chests all right but like just about every single one is empty like especially on the right side in the middle and all the barrels as well are empty. Uh, yeah, the only ones that actually have stuff in them are just a couple on this side. And yeah, I organized my stuff really well. I just want to point that out. Yeah, uh, I actually kind of did a little bit. Like, here's crops and farming stuff. Here's, like, passive mob drops or whatever you call mobs that don't, like, do damage to you. Then I continued yapping, so let's just skip over that. So once you get outside, you get to take a good look of all of these, uh, what do you call them? Street light things. And there is a ridiculous amount of them. Then you get to this pathway, which leads to my barn looking thing. I guess it's a barn. It kind of doesn't really look like a barn. Uh, yeah, we have like basically an endless supply of cows. I know. We also have not so much of an endless supply of pigs. Uh, we also got some chicken. Die, please. Then you come over here to the camel, which, uh, I'm gonna have to back up pretty far to fit it all in frame. There it is. It looks, it's pretty big. It's pretty stupidly big in fact however i just gotta say i am way taller than it anyway you can go inside the camel's leg and up here to this very decorated interior and then if you head down this hole yeah i didn't die luckily uh there's water down here and this is uh my cave system kind of uh the infinite water source i used to place all this water and yeah uh the water tunnel that leads you up here i'm gonna throw an egg <laughs> does it go up with me yo it's floating up can you hatch a chicken wait what it just disappeared no anyway you leave the camel by going down here and yeah here you are um what else on the tour oh yeah my villager prison so yeah basically i have a bunch of these idiots locked up in prison and if you climb up here if you climb up on this ladder system and walk on the amazing roof i know the amazing dirt roof and then you can go down here you can visit all the inmates and you can slap them to your heart's desire i don't care they do raise their prices a little bit however i'm probably not going to be playing this world ever again so i really don't care well i think that's just about gonna do it for this goofy tour. i hope you liked it just kidding i hope you hated it well now all that's left to do is wait for the sun to go down and then i can go to bed and be on day 101 all right guys the sun is beginning to set well it'd be nice if you could see it past my stupid barn all right there we go bro now the sugar cane's in the way you know what i'm just gonna go on top of the barn oh finally i've survived 100 days in this world what's funny is that you can't even see the border anymore that's how far out it is it is still there though trust me i've looked well time to go to bed gg easy anyways that's how i survived 100 days in a one by one expanding border in hardcore minecraft if you enjoyed the video please be sure to like and subscribe to help me hit 69 trillion subscribers see ya in the next one